Mr. Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass the bill S-1617, Disaster Assistance for Rural Communities Act. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Senate 1617, an act to modify the requirements for the administrator of the Small Business Administration relating to declaring a disaster in a rural area and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentlewoman from New York, Ms. Velasquez, and the gentleman from Missouri, Mr. Luke Camaro, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from New York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the measure under consideration. Without objection. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentlelady is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of S-1617, the Disaster Assistance for Rural Communities Act. This bill will close a loophole in the Small Business Administration Disaster Lending Program, which disproportionately impacts homeowners and businesses located in remote rural areas. Although people assume SBA only provides assistance to small businesses after a declared disaster, the opposite is true. In fact, according to the to CRS, approximately 80% of SBA disaster loans were awarded to individuals and households rather than businesses. SBA disaster lending program has been an important tool that helps not only business owners, but also homeowners and renters rebuild after disaster and emergencies. Under the current law, when the president declares a disaster under the Stafford Act, but does not authorize individual assistance. The SBA must declare a disaster for an individual to apply for a loan. Yet for SBA to declare a disaster, a minimum amount of physical damage must be sustained by a certain number of homes and businesses in a, in a county or smaller political subdivision. This policy hurts remote rural areas because SBA cannot declare a disaster if a minimum number of homes or businesses aren't damaged or destroyed. This outdated policy is hurting some of our most vulnerable citizens. We must close this loophole, especially as major disasters become more prevalent and destructive due to climate change. In 2021, the United States experienced 20 separate billion dollar weather and climate disasters, which caused $145 billion in damage. This bill addresses this issue by allowing SBA to declare a disaster in any rural area in which a major disaster has been declared by the president, but individual assistance hasn't been authorized under the Stafford Act. It is critical that SBA disaster lending programs be available to all individuals, no matter where they reside or where they operate their business. I thank Senator Rich, Shaheen, Hassan, Kennedy, and Brown for their leadership on this important measure. And I would like to also thank Mr. Golden, who introduced a companion bill on this House side. I urge all members to vote yes and reserve the balance of my time. The gentlelady reserves. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Missouri. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman has the floor. And I rise in support of S-1617, the Disaster Assistance for Rural Communities Act. Whether it's a, tur whether it's a hur hurricane, tornado, fly fire, or flood, we're all too familiar with the natural disaster's devastating impact on our communities and constituents. Following the disaster, the SBA provides valuable services and loans to businesses and homes affected. Due to the rural areas being sparsely populated, they are often outliers when it comes to disaster assistance. This important legislation corrects this unintended consequence by creating a rural category for SBA declared disasters. Additionally, the legislation requires the Government Accountability Office, GAO, to report on how rural areas are specifically impacted by disasters and the legislation requires the SBA to annually report on all rural disaster declarations. Small businesses are the lifeblood of the, of the economy in rural communities, and we must ensure that they have the ability to receive SBA assistance when a disaster strikes. 
I'd like to thank my sta uh, Senate colleagues for their support for rural communities and their work on this legislation. S-1617 passed the Senate in September, and I urge my colleagues to support it. With that, Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The chair will receive a message. Mr. Speaker, messages from the Senate. Mr. Speaker. Madam Secretary. I have been directed by the Senate to inform the House that the Senate has passed S-4052, an act to reauthorize a program for early detection, diagnosis, and treatment regarding deaf and hard of hearing newborns, infants, and young children, and for other purposes which concurrence of the House is requested. Okay. The gentlewoman from New York is now recognized. I have no further speakers, uh, and I'm prepared to close, Mr. The speaker. gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have no further speakers either, and I am prepared to close as well. The gentleman has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. S-1617 will provide rural areas with enhanced eligibility for SBA disaster declared loans. This bipartisan bill takes an important step to aid rural communities and small businesses when a disaster strikes and urge my colleagues to support this legislation. With that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. The chair recognizes the gentleman from New York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This legislation to update SBA policy to provide assistance to homeowners and businesses in remote rural areas is long overdue. Individuals affected by natural disasters need SBA assistance now more than ever, particularly with the threat of major disaster due to climate change. A business location shouldn't determine their eligibility for aid in the wake of a natural disaster. Simply put, it is not fair for SBA loans to be available for individuals impacted by a tornado or flood in an urban area, but not a remote air, rural area just because the number of properties damaged by the disaster didn't meet an arbitrary threshold. The SBA's disaster lending program has been an essential tool helping people get back on their feet after a disaster, and the program should be available to help as many people as possible. I want to thank Ranking Member Mr. Luke Meyer for working with me to get this bill passed today. In the 117th Congress, Representative Luke Meyer joined the committee as the Ranking Member, and while we may not have always seen eye to eye, we were able to set aside our differences to bring more than 20 bipartisan bills to the floor, including legislation to extend the statute of limitations for fraud cases involving PPP and COVID idol. The spirit of bipartisanship has always been central to the day-to-day -day operations of the committee. I look forward to continuing this tradition. American small businesses deserve nothing less. I would like to once again thank the members of the committee and their staff who have worked tirelessly through this Congress to aid small business owners and entrepreneurs throughout the country. I am incredibly proud of all the work our committee has done to support small businesses when they need it the most. I urge my colleagues to vote yes on S1617, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman yields back the balance of her time. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass Senate 1617? Those in favor, please say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, that for what purpose